If you're someone who likes to measure headphones, specifically with the cheap knockoff clone couplers and pinna that you can get on places like AliExpress, there was a recent new release in regards to the pinna, which ends up being quite a nice upgrade if you're measuring headphones. So just to catch people up, when it comes to measuring headphones, you'll want to use something that has a human-like acoustic impedance and also a somewhat realistic pinna. It's not really recommended to use binaural mics or other devices that might be advertised as, as headphone measurement rigs that don't have an included ear simulator. Just because it looks like it might be a proper ear simulator doesn't mean it'll give you the results that you want. Having an incorrect acoustic impedance will cause the measurements to be off and could be misleading if you don't know quite what you're looking at. But the problem is that a proper human-like ear simulator usually costs thousands of dollars. Just for the coupler itself will cost thousands of dollars, and then the pin on top of that will cost quite a lot as well. Some of these are $5,000, $7,000, or tens of thousands of dollars. So when it comes to doing your own measurements at home, there really wasn't very many options. But since the 7-Eleven coupler has been around for almost 40 years, it was only a matter of time before cheaper alternatives using that design would come out. And this has been a really nice option for hobbyists just wanting something that is similar to a proper measurement system that they can get for quite cheap. The ear simulator that I use is based on the IEC 7-Eleven coupler, and then it also has a pinna that's based on the grass systems. While this would normally be around $7,000, I think, for my system, the ear simulator itself was about $80, and then the pinna is about $100. So it is quite a bit cheaper. So what does this all mean? Well, for the longest time, if you want to use this sort of knockoff system, the pinna that you would buy with it was based on the old grass Keymar pinna, or KV0065 pinna. The pinna itself was more stiff than a realistic human pinna, so for some applications, like measuring certain smaller or on-ear headphones, it ends up causing some issues with leakage. This wasn't quite human-like, but it was typical at the time. But still, the clone pinnas were based on this real grass pinna, but for modern applications, it, didn't quite, it doesn't quite match what is available now. Since then, grass had upgraded to the KB5000 series pinna, which is softer and a little bit more human-like. And then there's also other developments with newer ear simulators as well. But recently, there was a new option when it comes to the pinna that you can buy for these clone systems. The new pinna is based on the Grass KB5010, and from my experience, it's a great improvement over the old one. The most important feature to me being that it's much softer and allows it to deform properly when measuring headphones that are either smaller or on-ear. The pinna is able to deform and flatten more realistically, which will give also a better, more realistic seal when doing a measurement. As, as far as how well it compares to a real Grass pinna, I still won't really comment on that. I don't have the experience with the real equipment to compare it myself, and even with this, you can't really compare between your own measurements and a, an official one. First of all, the tolerances of this clone gear is not quite as good as the real ones. There's still quite a bit of different variation between these cheaper ear simulators, whereas the real ones are built within really tight tolerances. As well, the different way that you measure and your different measurement methodology will also affect your final frequency response. But not trying to compare to the real gear, just comparing to the old option that we had, it does seem like a good improvement to me. For my measurement database, I updated most of my headphone measurements to have both the new pinna and old pinna so you can compare yourself. So when looking at this, we can see that this looks like an HD600 measurement. And this pinna is supposed to be more compliant towards the Harman target, so I switched my so I switched the default target back to Harman. Now, when we bring back the old measurement, we can see that there is some noticeable variation between them. The old pinna seems to emphasize the upper mids more, and then there usually seems to be some more treble peaks in it. Now, just seeing this alone, it's still not really recommended to compare against other measurements, as even this difference would be within the realm of unit variation, or even just measurement variation from how you place it on the rig. If we just jump over to Critical's measurements and compare his, we can see that he's using a proper grass ear simulator and KV5000 pinna, and these are his HD600 measurements. There is quite a bit of variation between these ones. These are differences between pad wear and also placement. So from these, so just from these differences, we're getting quite a bit of variation here. Some even look like the variation between my old pinna and new pinna. So just trying to judge straight on from one frequency response to another, it is good to remember that there's going to be a lot of variation in the upper frequencies, depending on how it's measured, the headphone itself, pad wear, unit variation, or just how it's placed on the rig. So don't try to scrutinize it too much in that sort of sense. But going back to mine, the biggest improvement is definitely is that the pin is softer and seals better. If we go to another headphone that's not quite as large and something that's smaller, we can see a much bigger difference. So going over to something like the HyperX Cloud 2, which is a very popular gaming headphone, we can see that this looks typical of what you might hear. It's got a pretty big base shelf and then a lot of the treble peaks. Now this is measured with the new pinna, which is much softer. Now measuring with the old pinna, we get a result that looks like this. 
it has this huge drop in the bass response and then this bump here and then there's also the differences in the higher frequencies but the main thing to take away here is that with the old penna just setting it on the rig doesn't let the headphones seal properly which causes this really big bass loss just because the pinna is too stiff and sticks out and holds the headphone away from the measurement rig. Now you could get around this by physically holding the headphone against the measurement rig, which does give a much better result and is sometimes what you just need to do to get a realistic sort of measurement from this rig. But that also introduces some other issues and is just also not enjoyable to, to use it that way. So having the new pinna, which you just set it on the rig and it deforms properly and gives a realistic sort of measurement, is an improvement that to me is just perfectly worth its price. Now, if, if you'd like to compare some of these yourself with my measurement database, all you have to do is go down to the description and click on and click on my link for my headphone squig link. Now, from there, you can just pick one of the headphones from the sidebar here, and then on the bottom here, press the little plus symbol next to the headphone. This will open up the option where it has other measurements of the same headphone. In this case, I have the measurement here labeled old pinna. So from that, you can just press the plus sign, and then that adds a secondary measurement to the graph. But yeah, that was my experience with the new clone pinna. And I hope this video was helpful for anyone who was considering buying it.